Hello sailors, you're watching the Dodgy Kebab, and this video is about WWF games. Yeah, I know these days it's called WWE, but for me, this is WWF. Not this. When I was young, there was a few wrestling games in the arcade, but WWF Superstars was the first proper WWF game, and it was great. It was made by Technos, who were famous for making Double Dragon, Renegade, and well, actually their other games were a bit shit, but never mind. WWF Superstars was a fun game at the time though. You pick two of the six wrestlers on offer. I normally picked Warrior and Hogan. Never fucking boss man though. He looks like the old crap rage face. You have to win three tag team matches to get a shot at the title, which is against Andre the Giant and the Million Dollar Man. You get led out on one of these things, which any old time WF fan will remember. Then you're just flung into your first match. There's not a great deal of different moves on offer, so you'll see a whole lot of grappling, throwing and punching. You beat your opponent down, but you can't see their life meter, so unless you've hammered them for ages, you can't be sure whether they'll kick out when you pin them or not. I found that getting them outside the ring and hitting them with the table seems to weaken them pretty fast. Once you've ruined the table, pull them back into the ring and you should be able to win after you've just slapped them out just a bit more. The second match is more of the same, as is the third, but the difficulty curve suddenly flies off the charts when you get to the final match against Andre and the Million Dollar Man. Before the match, Mean Gene has a few words with the champions, and while the Andre voice actor does an adequate impression, I got a suitcase and I got some more and, uh, Look at the jewelry. The Million Dollar Man actor sounds nothing like him. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream. Because I've got a prediction, Hogan. You're never going to make it to Atlantic City. You and that Ford wielding Duggan. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream. What the fuck was that? Anyway, the actual final match is bullshit. Andre is almost unbeatable. If you get close, you'll get slapped. If you try to throw him, you'll get slapped. He won't leave the ring to meet Mr. Table, so you're utterly fucked. I never beat Andre, but it doesn't matter because two years later, Technos made an even better WWF game called WrestleFest. There are two game modes, Royal Rumble and the progressive tag team mode again, but this time it's called Saturday Night's Main Event. There are now more wrestlers to choose from, the graphics are far better and the controls are a lot better. You have to fight through the different matches and end up fighting the champions, Legion of Doom. Another big improvement is although you can't see the opponent's life bar, you can tell when to go for a pin because your enemy will lay diagonal on the mat when they are too hurt to kick out. This game is such fun and just keeps improving in every area over the last game. It brings in a steel cage match for level 3 which stops you from getting out the ring and doing some cheap damage. There's a fourth stage which brings the normal rules back and then finally stage 5 which is the title fight against the Legion of Doom. Although these guys are quite good, it's not too hard unlike the totally unfair bullshit match in Superstars. You've got all this, and then there's the other mode called Royal Rumble, where you play the classic last man standing wrestling match. Once you've selected your guy, you start the match with five other guys, and once someone is eliminated, another wrestler enters the ring. There is a sneaky trick to victory, and that's just run left to right at the top of the screen and stay out of the way of everyone else while they beat the crap out of each other. Then just take on the last guy and win. Anyway, that's the arcade games, but once you got back home, the state of wrestling games on the consoles is pretty fucking dire. For most people my age, the first home wrestling game that you got to play was WWF WrestleMania Challenge on the NES. You select your game mode, then pick who you want to be, and you're first presented with the choice of being yourself. Okay, that looks nothing like me, so I guess I'm just supposed to pretend. But if I'm pretending, why not just pretend to be the ultimate warrior instead of this fucking bellend? There are other wrestlers to pick from, like Bossman and Andre, but look at Hacksaw Jim Duggan, he looks like a fucking retard. So I've picked Warrior and I'm up against Rick Rude, and this game is utter shit. You walk around the ring, it doesn't even feel like you're controlling the Ultimate Warrior. It feels like you're controlling some sort of radio control car. Hitting the opponent is pretty difficult, but he's having no problem slapping me about. And just watch this when I kick out the pinfall. What the fuck just happened to Rick Rude? 
All I seem to be able to do is this double axe handle move, which is about as useful as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking competition. But it gets worse. Here you can see me playing as Randy Savage, and I get thrown out of the ring. I can't work out how the fuck to get back in. Nothing seems to work. Not these steps, not walking up to the apron, none of these buttons. Warrior seems to have no problem getting back in as he fucking Superman leaps his way back in the cunt. And then, even to be an even bigger prick, Warrior fights me outside the ring and then just jumps straight back in at the last nanoseconds to make me lose and look like a right mug. Let's blow this off and look at WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge on the Sega Master System. I'm The Undertaker here against Ric Flair no relation. It controls better than the NES game, but still it's not really that good. Still, I'm able to beat seven shades of shit out of the nature boy here. I get him into a corner, and I've really got his life bar down to low, and then... Oh, uh, what? Where the fuck has that fucking come from? Seriously, what the actual fuck? I continue kicking the shit out of Flair and get his bar down to zero. I make this little mistake and knock myself down by running into the cage and in less than three seconds Flair scales the cage and wins. I don't even have time to get up and this guy has fucking cheats me. Fuck this game. Next up is WWF Super WrestleMania on the Sega Mega Drive. I had a friend who loved this game and he thought it was the bomb. I thought at the time the same thing I think now. This game is wank. But the picture of Million Dollar Man here is so ridiculous it's funny. And the picture of the Warrior looks like he's straining for some sort of tricky shit. This game is really slow. It's got slow clunky controls which make it not a lot of fun to play. The graphics are boring, the sound effects are boring. You want to know how it makes me feel about this game? Bored, 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 bored. There was a wrestling game on Sega's ill-fated 32X machine. This is WWF Raw. I'm not sure why Razor Ramon feels the need to pop up and down briefly in the intro. Plus, look at that expression on his face. So hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. As you can tell by this sorry looking mess, it's by the same guys as the Mega Drive game we just looked at. I'm not sure why I noticed this, but why is Whitney Houston in the commentary box? Maybe she heard that The Rock was here, but she got the wrong idea. Anyway, Anyway, this game is just as boring as the Mega Drive version. Moving on. Finally, we have WWF WrestleMania Arcade on the Sega Mega Drive by Midway. This is actually a home port of an arcade game of the same name. The Mega Drive version is a decent port. Okay, the graphics have been toned down, but the fast pace and decent controls are still in place. As a video game, it's quite good and is fun to play for a short while. As a wrestling game, it's pretty fucking shit. It's too over the top and is just outright ridiculous for the most part. Lucky for us, the 16-bit era was coming to an end at this point, and far better WWF wrestling games were on their way. Many fans really enjoyed WrestleMania 2000 on the N64, but for me, it's when Smackdown on the PlayStation appeared that we finally got a home game that wrestling fans deserved. Anyway, that's all for now. How about Hello sailors, thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me in my future videos, there's a Patreon link down there if you want to go that way, or by request I've now added a direct PayPal donate button, so if you want to do it that way, do it that way. There's other things you can do, you can follow me on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and why not have a look at these other videos I'm linking on the screen right now. Anyway, that's all, bye bye.